Governor Phil Murphy, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Honored to be with you, Trevor. Let's jump straight into it. You are one of the hottest working governors in America right now because of what the coronavirus has done to your state. New Jersey is experiencing one of the largest outbreaks in the country. First things first, do you know why or, or has there been any discovery as to why New Jersey was hit so hard? Was it because of proximity to New York or was there another reason? Yeah, I think a couple of reasons, Trevor. Number one, we're part of the Metro New York reality, particularly in our Northern part of the state. So if you look at the six counties that have been hit the hardest in New Jersey, they're all commuting counties into New York. And I think secondly, it has to be said that we're the densest state in America. So this thing, once it got going, it spread in particular in those counties, but now in every county in our state like wildfire. And I think it's a combination of both of those. The White House reported recently that New Jersey is one of the places where the coronavirus is under control and the numbers are starting to decline. So my first question to you would be, is that true? And then if so, what is, the, what is the game plan for reopening the states? I mean, nobody wants to rush, but everybody understands that at some point, normal life or a semblance of normal life has to resume. You bet. So our mantra is personal health leads to economic health in that order. Uh, I would say it's better than it was a week ago without question, but the house is still on fire. We got a plateau and then drive that curve down the other side. So we're not there yet. Uh, and, and we're going to have to continue fighting this fire before we can, we can responsibly re reopen. Could we see that sort of a month from now? Could we be in a, you know, a, a meaningfully different and better place? I, I, hope, uh, uh, I hope, but we got to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. You, you, you are preparing um, for both scenarios. You've also teamed up with a group of other governors on the East Coast to try and manage this collectively, because as we've seen, it moves from state to state, and so people need to try and work together to, to confront the virus. What are your benchmarks for reopening the state? What are you hoping to achieve before New Jersey can go back to being a, a functional state? You have sort of three rings of responsibility here. You got to do what's right for your own state. That's job number one. But because, again, we're the densest part of the country, doing it in concert or at least in harmony with your neighboring states is is incredibly important. And then thirdly is the piece you got to do it with a very robust federal presence and federal partnership. And that's something that we uh, continue to also need. So this is not either or, it's and both. Uh, the, the experts will suggest that at a minimum, we need probably two or three times the amount of testing every day that we're currently doing. So instead of seven to 9,000 a day, you know, you're talking 15, 20, 25,000 tests a day. They've got to be rapid turnarounds, so they can't be tests where you're waiting seven days for your result, but you know within a day that you've got, as you rightfully suggest, a contract contact tracing protocol in place. And we're, we're, we're formulating that both in New Jersey as well as in the region and with our federal partners. So it's all of those elements that uh, are works in progress right now, uh, hopefully sooner than later, but we're not there yet on any of the above. You've spoken um, quite extensively about how many people are struggling, um, you know, to get food, how many people are struggling to pay for their rent, for their house, for anything to sustain themselves in, lives, in life, and um, how much the state of New Jersey still needs. Is there a part of you that's concerned as a governor that if you get to a tipping point, the people will no longer want to listen because they cannot afford to listen to the stay-at-home orders that the governor issues. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, so far, so good. I'm finding some wood to knock on here, Trevor. Here we go. Uh, so far, so good. The compliance, we have 9 million people in New Jersey. The compliance has been extraordinary. There are always exceptions. There are going to be knuckleheads out there, as we call them, who do stupid things. But overwhelmingly, people are doing the right thing. But to mm -hmm. your very good mm -hmm. question, there's economic pain. Folks have lost their jobs in, at historic, never-before-seen levels. Small businesses are on the rocks, if not busted completely. Uh, the weather's getting better. Uh, kids have been homeschooling by remote uh, uh, learning for X number of weeks, and we've said it's going to go on for at least several, several more weeks. So my big plea is anybody watching from New Jersey, but I would say from America right now, less told otherwise, Please, God, stay with it. Stay the course. Uh, we know it's frustrating. We know it's it, folks have cabin fever. We completely get that. We understand it completely. But we also understand the only way we beat this damn thing is if we stay home, stay away from each other, crush that curve, and then from that personal health, 
can economic health finally come? Thank you so much for your time today, Governor. Um, I appreciate your answers, and um, I'm hoping that you're right. I hope the knuckleheads um, listen to the voice of reason, and hopefully we see this thing on the other side. Thanks for having me, Trevor.